Hey, it's Jordan. Uh, I wanted to let the viewers know um, about a Native American woman who uh, was at Standing Rock, who unfortunately passed away, uh, I believe, yesterday. Um, you know, what we do with Status Quo is much different than corporate outlets because we don't really go first when we're covering stories somewhere in the country and try to talk to government officials or experts. You know, we generally go speak directly with the people affected, whether it be residents or activists. And at Standing Rock, I was there, uh, not with Status Quo, but with the Young Turks. Um, I met a lot of people that I would have never, ever met, um, you know, in a different circumstance. And one of them was LaDonna Brave Bull Allard, um, who was a uh, leader, a, a real leader of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, not like officially on their tribal council or, or anything, but kind of beloved in the community, particularly among the activists and the water protectors who came to Standing Rock. She, um, she ran Sacred Stone Camp, which was not the big, big camp that everybody congregated in. That was a Osheti Soko, so, uh, Osheti Sokoan, uh, but she ran Sacred Stone Camp, which was another camp uh, on the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. And I interviewed her many times. And um, most recently I interviewed her in November of 2020 when it seemed that she miraculously was recovering from, uh, I believe it was stage four brain cancer, which normally uh, you don't recover from. So in November of last year, when I interviewed her, she was recovering. Unfortunately, uh, she died over the weekend. And I just wanted to just give one memory of her. Uh, literally, I think it was the first or second day that I got to Standing Rock. I, I kind of knew from an outsider's point of view of the story, uh, of the pipeline going through the reservation. But you don't really know everything until you're there for a while. And I, I was there seven times on and off. Um, but the, one of the first days I was there, I asked somebody at the camp, like, who would you go to speak to if you want to know just from, you know, from the beginning, what's going on? And several people told me, go talk to LaDonna. So I went to Sacred Stone Camp and, you know, I'm an outsider. Uh, the, the indigenous people there were rightly kind of um, suspicious of the press. But LaDonna actually invited me in at Sacred Stone Camp into a prayer ceremony. Uh, they were giving a, fe uh, I don't know the proper term, but a feather. I don't know if it was an eagle feather or something to a water protector because that water protector had chained himself to a construction machine to try and stop construction for a day. Uh, his, they, they called him Happy. That was his name. And it was at Sacred Stone Camp and LaDonna ran Sacred Stone Camp and they invited me in with my cameraman to film this prayer ceremony. And honestly, it was one of the most beautiful things I had ever experienced. I mean, I'm a white upper middle class Jew from Long Island. I mean, I never really hung out with Native Americans because there aren't many on Long Island. Um, but seeing this prayer ceremony and everybody circle to circle going around uh, saying, you know, how grateful they are for what this Native American did, uh, chaining himself to the construction machine, and each person talking about the looming fight against the pipeline, for the land, for the water. And all of this was led by LaDonna. And she did things like that at Sacred Stone Camp all the time. And so many fires, had to be put out at stand, not literal fire, well, some, but um, so many fires every day had to be put out at Standing Rock. And LaDonna was a real leader um, in, in helping put out those fires. Uh, the other thing is she was a real spiritual leader. I mean, so many Native Americans uh, that are part of that tribe and even environmental activists that did not live there or not Native American, but came, went to LaDonna and got you know, counsel um, on some of the horrific things they were seeing. And honestly, part of what we do at Status Quo is we stay on stories long after all the cameras have left. 
and LaDonna never gave up. Even after the pipeline started flowing oil, even after Trump, um, you know, gave the permits right away when he became president, uh, even after spills, she never stopped fighting against this pipeline, uh, kicking, screaming, um, trying to work with the tribe in filing their lawsuits. Uh, but she was really just a beautiful person. Um, I really enjoyed talking to her. She was very kind to me and my cameraman at the time at Standing Rock. And, you know, this is, you, you know, when you're around the Standing Rock Sioux tribe, but just Native Americans in general, it's just amazing the amount of oppression, genocide, rape, kidnapping, just evil treatment that, that they have experienced and LaDonna experienced. How spiritual and prayerful, forgiving and faithful they are. And LaDonna was all of those things. Um, so it's a sad, sad day. Uh, I don't think she, I, maybe she was in her 60s. I'm not sure how old she was, but she was not a, she was still relatively young. And uh, the only blessing, I guess, is her husband, who was also at the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, uh, at the fights, at the pipeline fight. Um, and just a really happy-go-lucky guy. He, he passed a few years ago, so, you know, in a way it's, you know, if you believe in that sort of thing, uh, they're reunited. So just wanted to kind of share uh, a little recounting of uh, my experiences with LaDonna. And um, these are the everyday heroes that you will not see featured on CNN's Heroes or, you know, some of those. Uh, but these are the everyday heroes that, even though we have a lot of fights we haven't won yet, at least continue the fight. So, uh, you know, rest in power, as they say, uh, to LaDonna Brave Bull Allard. You know, as Native people, 528 years we have been going through this. Nothing has changed. Um, but yet we are still here with her hand saying, come, sit down and talk with me. Come, I'll feed you. I'll help you. And I don't know how we can change who we are. The young people talked to me a while ago. They came to my house and they said, Grandma, we have this thing inside of us. And I said, well, what is it? He said, we call it the red rage now. And I said, oh, I know. I feel it too. I am doing everything in my power not to let it consume me. But there's this thing that connects us so close to the earth that hurts us so bad when you hurt anything of the earth. And I don't understand it. I don't understand why this grief inside me for the water exists. I don't understand. And I do have a bit of red rage because I wouldn't be sitting here with a geoblastoma tumor if Kelsey Warren didn't give the command to spray us with rat poison. And so there are, I think, 200 of us dead. It is abnormal to have so many strains of cancer and one tiny spot. And that's all since the pipeline protests. It is all since they sprayed us. Wow. Obviously, you mentioned you're already at poverty levels there. Then after uh, the No Dapo movement, things got worse. Can you kind of talk about the coronavirus? We know it's ravaging North Dakota, South Dakota right now. Uh, you see out west of you, uh, you know, it's devastated, devastated other tribes. How has this affected your tribe, Standing Rock Sioux? So we're in a red zone. 
I can't leave my house. I could not go to any of my relatives' funerals. And I had nine now they died. And right now, remember I said this little red rage? I want to throat punch anybody who says anything against masks. Or maybe a little lower. So I assume you haven't seen your, I, I assume you haven't been able to see your grandchildren. Well, my grandchildren all moved to Hawaii. Mm. So, and my great grandchildren, they're all in Hawaii. They're all safe. And they're all doing really good. Good, good. I'm and glad they're not here. And do you have a message for uh, President-elect Joe Biden, who hasn't really given a firm answer on what he would do about the Code Access Pipeline? Uh, he's taken a lot of money from banks and oil companies. Uh, he says the words that he takes climate change seriously. What's your message to him regarding uh, not just the Dakota Access Pipeline, but actually investing in communities like Standing Rock? Well, I think we need to first invest in the world. I truly believe we are at the last leg of the buffalo, that there is no more time for chit chat and who's who and who. It is the time for action. We actually have to physically go out and pick up that garbage bag and pick up garbage. And, and for me, if we change life very simply, we can do it. So a man who is in a position, as we've just went through four years, can change things. Biden, you're standing with the first Native woman. You know our home and our land means so much to us. Do you know that if we sat down and talked to each other and shared history, we could make this land even more beautiful? Do you know if we became friends, we could make a better world for everybody? And I pray that you choose to have an indigenous person in every one of your committees. That's what I ask, to have a voice. And uh, lastly, if you don't mind sharing, uh, I think a lot of people need hope right now. Can you share uh, what your doctor told you when they went in for surgery? Because it seems like you are one in a million. You had this, what they said was inoperable brain tumor. And what did he find and what did he tell you? So I have geoblastoma brain tumor. It's the most aggressive evasive brain tumor, inoperable. And I didn't even know I had anything wrong with me. And I fell down in my house. So they took me to the hospital and took me in. And he said, I should have died. He said, when I woke up, I shouldn't wake up. When I was alive two days, they said I shouldn't be here. He said, when he opened my head, the tumor was sitting in the, so he's able to remove it. And then he was able to remove all the cancer. And so when I woke up, I woke up talking. So honestly, I woke up talking like two hours later and he said, you shouldn't be talking. And I said, but I talk all the time. And he said, try to rest. We just opened your brain and we took a tumor out. And I was like, okay but I don't know why I shouldn't talk. <laughs> anyway, he said, he said, you're one in a million. There is no way you should have survived this surgery. There is no way I should have been able to remove that tumor. He said, you're an anomaly. You're one in a million. Don't waste a minute of your life. 
And I said, I never have. But in this time, they gave us this time to change things, to make things better. We have to grab this time. So I think they gave me a bigger mouth to say more stuff because we have to find a bridge, uh, a thing to stand together. We have to re-identify who we are as people. And they're not going to do it themselves. They have to sit down and they have to talk to each other. So to Biden, put indigenous people on your committees Put the voice out. Don't make us invisible because we only want what's good for all the people.